The universe survival arc is here and the best and legal way to watch Dragon Ball Super in high definition subtitled is with the official sponsor of the Geekdom 101 Dragon Ball Super Reviews and that's Crunchyroll. And you can still get 30 free days of premium access, gives you hundreds of hours of unlimited anime. Crunchyroll.com slash geekdom, sign up today and support Dragon Ball Super. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Universe Survival Arc continues with Dragon Ball Super Episode 78, which I do believe is the longest episode title in all of Dragon Ball Super. Let's see if I can get through this one, all right? Zenuchu no Kamisawa mo Doniki, Maketara Shometsu Chikara no Taikai. And I know it's cringy, but hey, at least I tried, and like I always say, it's always better to try and then fail, then never trying at all. So that translates to, the universe's gods are aghast. You'll be obliterated if you lose at the Tournament of Power. And I got a smile on my face right now because I really, really like this episode. All right, so, all right, let's talk about some of the scenes in this episode. So the opening scene of the episode, really cool scene. Um, there's some music there I did not recognize, and basically... Uh, the Daishinkan's going over some things that, if you've been keeping up on spoilers, you know some of it, but there's some new information here. For example, the upcoming Universe Survival Tournament is going to be held in a void. It's a, it's a world of nothing, pretty much, which, according to what Herms translated, it's a place without time or space. That way they can fight as hard as they want without any casualties. Now, I like this because it's unique and it's creative and it's like an alternate realm. Now... It's interesting because this void, this nothing world, exists outside of the 12 universes. So, some people are going to be confused by this. They're going to think, oh, well, it's another universe. It, not really. It's more like a different realm, if that makes sense to you. You got to understand, universes in Dragon Ball and, like, different realms aren't exactly the same thing. So, that's pretty cool. And, of course, the Daishinkan then gives, you know, the Great Priest gives them the bad news. That the universe that loses is wiped out. And of course, Beerus and the Kais are stunned. And what happens if you win the tournament? Well, you get two things. Jack and shit. That's right. You don't get nothing if you win. You survive. That's why it's called the Universe Survival Arc. But if you lose, the Omni King will destroy your universe. And... Of course, Beerus is not happy about this. And I wonder, you know, I wonder while watching this, is Beerus regretting having that Super Saiyan God dream? Because had Beerus never had the dream, had Beerus never woken up, had he never met Goku, right? Goku would never have even known who the Omni King was. None of this would have happened. So, I wonder. I really do. It's very interesting to me. Um, and then also, the Daishinkan reveals that he wants to have a warm-up. He wants to see a warm-up fight that Zeno wants to see a warm-up fight between Universe 7 and another universe because the future Omni-King never got to see him fight. We, If you've been keeping up with spoilers, you know that's the case. You probably knew last week. So, Goku has to, of course, recruit a three-person team to go fight. Uh, and, of course, they have this interesting scene where Beerus is looking at Goku with, like, a death stare. He's like, what have you done? Like... You don't understand. Even if you are cool with this guy, even if you call him Zenchan, he will blow up the universe. He does not care. He cannot be reasoned with. I think, in my opinion, Beerus, or I'm sorry, Goku at some point will reason with him. I don't think this arc is going to end with the universe is getting destroyed like that. I really don't, but I could be wrong. I just, my prediction, something's going to happen. Now, Goku, of course, vows to Beerus that no matter what, they will win the tournament. They'll do it. He's trying to instill confidence in Beerus. So, we then cut to Goku recruiting people, and the first guy he goes to is Vegeta. But Bulma's still pregnant, so that's not going to happen. Then we have a really cool fight with Goten Trunks. It's only a little, it's only short, very, very short, but it was a cool throwback to that fight they had in the tournament. And I really liked the scenes. I thought the animation was very fluid. I mean, I really enjoyed it. Some people were telling me the animation looked weird in this episode. Some of the shots may have looked a little weird, but overall, I think it looked fine, I mean, honestly. Um, so, Vegeta, it's interesting. So, Goku talks about recruiting Goten, and Vegeta's like, well, I don't know, do you really want to do that? And then Goku remembers he has another son, which is, of course, Gohan. And the thing that's weird about this whole Goten Trunks thing is, I understand maybe Goku preferring Gohan, but remember, in the Buu Saga, Goku 
pretty much instilled the hope of humanity in Goten and Trunks and the fusion. So Majin Buu at the time was a really ruthless and terrifying enemy, right? And despite all that, it was still the responsibility of Goten and Trunks to save the world. So I just find it weird that now they're kind of being more conservative about their kids. That's weird. So Goku then goes to see fucking Point Dexter with his little green sweater, Gohan, and... Uh, Goku tells Gohan about the whole, you know, he re tries to recruit him about the universe is being destroyed and all that. Gohan, of course, freaks out. Then we have something that really stunned me, okay? We see Baby Pan, who has to be, what, a year old maybe? Maybe a little bit more, a year and a few months. She flies into Videl's arms. Now, the reason why I bring that up, and you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. We already saw Pan fly in that one episode, you know, back after the Universe 6 tournament. We already saw that, but... A lot of people thought that was just wacky filler. Apparently not, folks. Apparently, based on what we have, Pan can indeed fly. That was not just like a filler thing. She can fly even though she's a baby, which is crazy because Gohan and Goku had to learn the Bukujutsu, the flight technique. She knows how to do it without even being trained. So that's kind of a scary, that's like, like scary prodigy level shit. I wonder if they'll explore that. Um, but anyway, so Mr. Satan shows up with Boo, and Goku sees Boo, and he's like, yo, bro, we need you to help us out. Boo might not be Beerus level, but he's still very durable and very strong. Then, Gohan and Goku and Boo go meet with Beerus and the Kais. Mr. Satan's with them, and then we see Gohan wearing his Boo Saga Gi, like the Mystic Gohan look, but he's got his glasses on. I just find it funny that Gohan, that in this universe of Dragon Ball, we have these meta-humans that are really powerful, and yet... They have nearsightedness. Like, that's weird to me. Like, I know when you're a warrior in Dragon Ball, you should know how to sense key, right? We all have learned that, you know, since the beginning of the series. And maybe you don't need to see. But I find it weird that Gohan needs glasses. Like, that's weird to me. I don't know. You'd think that he would be so strong that his eyes can... I mean, why doesn't Dende just heal him or... I don't know. I'm I'm overthinking it. It's just, it's just an anime. Don't overthink it. Anyways. Um, so they walk into this creepy room. And we see a bunch of new characters, and there they are. The Dangerous Trio. If you've been following the spoilers, you already know a little bit about these guys. The Coyote, the Wolf, and the Fox. Uh, thank you to whomever told me it was a Coyote. I completely didn't even see it until they told me. Yes, one's a Coyote, one's a Fox, one's a Wolf. From Universe 9, they show the God Destruction. So then they go down these like floating elevators into what appears to be like a combat arena and we see the epic shot with epic music of all the gods of destruction, all the angels, all the Kais from all the universes. They're there to watch the fight. Every major deity from all 12 universes is there to watch the preview fight. Goku, of course, recognizes Shampa. It's the only one he knows and he waves to him. Um, they don't give us their names yet, but we do clearly know like who belongs where like we know who they are now like their pairings and whatnot so then of course Zeno and future Zeno show up uh and basically the great priest explains that this is going to be a little you know uh, uh, an exhibition let's call it an exhibition for lack of a better term this will be an exhibition fight Goku steps up of course um we're introduced to the universe nine characters a little bit more uh the god destruction is Cedra, of course um based on Cider the, the Kaioshin from Universe 9 is a row. And then we have, of course, the Dangerous Trio, or the Trio of Danger, um, the Deadly Trio, whatever you want to call them. Basil, Bergamo, and Lavenda. Um, Omni King says there's no reward for this, so fight as hard as you, you know, fight to your heart's content is what he says. So Basil steps up first, and first of all, these guys look cool. I really like the Dangerous Trio. I've said it in other videos. I hope that with all these new characters, we get like a spinoff series or like a manga or something. I would love to see... The Adventures of the Dangerous Trio. Like, I want to see these guys, like, with their own series, you know, solving mysteries or something in Universe 9. That would be fucking awesome. And uh, then, you know, Goku wants Boo to fight, but Boo's asleep. He's asleep yet again. Everyone freaks out. So, uh, I thought it was funny. So, Mr. Satan uh, waves some chocolate under his nose when he wakes up. I thought that was a cool scene. Um, Daishinkan says, fight. Basil comes out with some big-ass kicks. He's nailing Boo with kicks really fast. Boom, 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 boom. Just kicks and knees, brother. Kicks and knees. If you're a wrestling fan and you've seen Shinsuke Nakamura wrestle... 
This guy's like Shinsuke Nakamura with the knees, all right? I know only a few of you will get that, but if you get it, I hope you have a smile on your face and give me the thumbs up like button. So he's pummeling Fat Boo. He is pummeling him, and I'm so happy because we finally get to see Boo and Gohan fight. We didn't see him fight in the Universe 6 tournament. We got jobbed out. That stupid excuse that Gohan was at a, 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 a job fair or some shit. I don't even remember what it was, and Boo fell asleep and failed the test or whatever. Uh, now we see him fight. I've been waiting for this. I'm so happy. Basil beats his ass and knocks him down. He laughs and he says, so this is your savior? This is who Universe 7 sent out? And then they cut to a close-up of Boo's face. And he's like, he looks like he's sad, but then his face turns into a smile. So this ain't over till it's over. And next week, and by the way, that is the end of the episode. That's Cliffhanger. Next week, Basil versus Boo continues. And I'm going to predict that Boo's going to unleash hell. But... I will be saving my in-depth predictions for my preview video, my prediction video, which will be on the channel tomorrow. Like it always is, guys. I always bring that to you. So I look forward to hearing some of your predictions and theories and whatnot. So I like this episode. I like that they're now, again, doing more world building. We're seeing new Gods of Destruction. The music was fine. The animation, I thought, was okay. I thought it was good. Some people said it wasn't. Hey, I respect your opinion. I, it didn't bother me, is what I'm saying. It didn't bother me. And when we criticize Dragon Ball, we have to, you know, some people get bothered by stuff. Others don't, you know, and to me, it looked fine. I like the episode. I'm happy. I'm so happy to see Majin Buu, and I'm so happy that Gohan, because I know the Gohan fans out there are going to freak out. I cannot wait to see Gohan handle these motherfuckers. It's coming. It's coming. Not next week, the week after. I believe, again, prediction, in two weeks, Gohan will be in action. I can't wait. Let me know your thoughts. And of course, before I go, I want to remind you guys about Crunchyroll. I always say it every week. They are the official sponsor of these Dragon Ball Super Reviews and of Geekdom 101. High definition. Crunchyroll.com slash Geekdom is where you go to watch to get 30 free days of Crunchyroll. Um, and you sign up that way and you can watch Dragon Ball Super uh, and other anime, it ain't just super, and they also have live action dramas, I should mention that as well, they have live action dramas and manga, like, if you're an anime fan, it's hard to be bored, because there's so much stuff there, that I haven't even discovered yet, it's like Netflix, you start digging through the crevices, and you find cool shit, so anyways, check them out, thank you so very much guys, uh, hope you all have a great, great weekend, and uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for my prediction, later.